Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. What happens to a person's belongings after they die? Whether it's gold, cash, or a house, typically someone inherits it. It was put somewhere in a will, somewhere in a contract, and it's passed on to the next person. But what happens to cryptocurrency after a person dies? The answer to that is not as simple. And it's something we need to start asking, should cryptocurrency owners make a will? But the better question is, even if they want to make a will, how will they make a will? This, this is, there's no such thing as a cryptocurrency will. How will this be done? And we're going to get to that today. And before we do, I just want you to please go down below, subscribe to the channel, please and thank you. Now back to our video. So how will people make a cryptocurrency will and I'm going to tell you today and the reason it's so important is because it's estimated that about 4 million Bitcoin have been lost as a result of people dying and not telling anyone about their password. This is billions of dollars that have just been lost and there's some very good examples of this happening. Uh, just, just back in 2018, a Ripple investor with $1 billion worth of XRP, he died. His name was Matthew Mellon. He died. $1 billion worth of XRP or Ripple at that time was lost forever. Then we also had the case in 2019 of the CEO of a Canadian exchange, Quadriga CX. His name is Gerald Cotton. He died and he was the only one that had access to $190 million worth of Ethereum. And his story on whether... He really died or not, that's for, that's for a separate story. But the bottom line is, in both of these cases, one person had access to the cryptocurrency, they died, and it's lost forever. So, how are we going to fix this? Well, there's not many, I guess, resolutions that are available today. But recently, there's a new company, CoinCover, that came out with what they believe is the first, first cryptocurrency will. And they say it's the first and only service to guarantee your cryptocurrency will to be fully retrievable by your loved one. So I was very curious when I saw this. And again, you don't have to hold $100 million worth of cryptocurrency to think about an idea of having a will. Even if you hold $5,000, even $10,000, that's $10,000 that if you, pass, if you pass away, you can pass along to family. So I was on this website and I was looking into how this works. And right off the bat, they say, no hardware wallets needed or to lose, no paper keys to store, no passwords to remember or share, no long codes, you don't have to be tech savvy. So they're pretty much saying here is that once you set up this, this will, the family members that you have give access to eventually retrieve your funds after you pass away, it's going to be super simple for them. So this is how they say it works, all right? So over here I have on the screen, it says you go, to, you go to their website, you create an ID, you, know, you confirm your identity with a, you know, a few documents, and then you identify who are your executors. So these are the people that, if you do pass away, they're the people that can go ahead and inherit or retrieve your funds. Then you set up a wallet, a multi-signature wallet, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute. You set up your amendments, you write down everything on your will, and then you give out these these metal cards to your executors or to the people that you want to have your funds after you die. So to keep that shortened, you create an account, you, you choose your people that you want to inherit your funds, you create a wallet, and then you give the keys to those people. And when you die, pretty simple. All those people have to do is bring the card and proof of your death to the company, to CoinCover, and then CoinCover will then give you or the family member the cryptocurrency or the cash equivalent. So I saw this and I thought this is pretty interesting, but how does this really work? You know, you're still trusting a third party, which is something that everyone in the cryptocurrency does not want to do. I guess that's the whole point of cryptocurrency and especially Bitcoin is that you do not want to choose a third party. But in this case, you are, I guess, you're, you know, you're choosing this company CoinCover to be the third party custodian. So as I was reading through how this will works, it does mention that the wallets that you set up, it's a multi-signature wallet. So a multi-signature wallet is a wallet that needs two or more passwords or private keys 
to use those funds. Most of the wallets that people use today, it's just a single signature. All you need is one private key, your private key. You can send the money. But it's safer to have a wallet that's multi-signature. An example of someone that might want to use a multi-signature wallet is a company that has two or three business partners that have a wallet containing cryptocurrency. And to prevent one person from spending all of the money from that wallet, every time they need to unlock or send money, they're going to need two or more keys. They're going to, so each person is going to have to provide their private key. So in this case, it will be a multi-signature wallet. So you, will, you have your key and they'll hold a key for you so that you still have access to the wallet. But I was still thinking, this isn't a trustless system. You're still having to put your trust in a third party. And it does mention that this wallet, this multi-signature wallet, will be created through BitGo. So BitGo, BitGo and uh, the company over here, CoinCover, they will act as the custodian and they'll have the backup key. And they're saying that they'll keep that key locked and only in the event of your death, once there's proof, and they look into it and investigate it, then they can take both of those keys and unlock your funds and give it to the family, either in cryptocurrency or in cash. So I know everyone in the cryptocurrency space has this idea of a truly trustless system, but I'm not quite sure how you can really get trustless when it comes to a will. You need to have someone else with access to your funds, because of course, once you're dead, you don't have access to it yourself. So I know a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space have this grand idea of truly trustless, but I'm not sure if we can get there. But this is a good start. Another idea you can have, and this would only work with someone who is a little tech savvy or, or knows about cryptocurrency, is while you're still alive, you can just simply give your private key or your 24, 24 word seed to somebody that you trust. And again, this is risky. You are trusting somebody, but at least you get to trust someone such as family or your best friend that you really believe will do the right thing. And for example, when you create a hardware wallet, as you can see on the screen here, this is a Ledger Nano X or a Ledger Nano S, whatever model this is. When you create it, you can get a 24 word passphrase. And this can restore your funds at any time in the future. So typically people are recommended to write it down, store it away somewhere, or maybe even just remember it. But you never want to store this somewhere online or email it to yourself because then it's online and it's vulnerable to being hacked. So that's the first thing you could do if you're tech savvy or the people that you want to retrieve your cryptocurrency are tech savvy. You can simply give them this. But another idea that I thought of that might be even a little safer is that this is a 24 word seed. You can split it up into 12 and 12. So you have 12 of the private key, of the seed of the private seed phrases and then the other 12. Now, you can give those 12 seed phrases 12 seed word phrases to whoever you want. You can give it to your mother, your brother, your cousin, whoever it is, your father, and they could hold on to it. Just having those 12 keys alone is not good enough for them to use your cryptocurrency. Now, what do you do with the other 12 words? That is where you can go the traditional route of a living will. You can, you can store those 12 seed phrases you know, on a death contract or a living will, and it will only be released to your family once you die. So your family will have 12 of the seed phrases, which they can't do anything with. The living will will also have 12 of the seed phrases, and they can't do anything with those 12. They need to be together 24. And when a person dies, those remaining 12 word seed phrases will be released to the family member. Additionally, just as people store things in bank safes, gold, important documents, you can also store the other 12 seed phrases in a bank safe. And then when a person dies, they had it in their wishes to release the contents of the safe to the family. Now the family member or the friend will have all 24 seed phrases and access to your cryptocurrency. But all of these examples that I just spoke about, this is for more tech savvy people. But for the people that are not tech savvy, it does seem that something like this company, the coin cover and their will might actually be the best bet. And then as I mentioned, everyone in the cryptocurrency space, they really want a, tro a totally 
decentralized, trustless system. But as I said, I don't know how possible that is when it comes to a living will. The only thing that I could think of, and it's probably things, a thing that other people in the cryptocurrency space think of, are self-executing smart contracts. So for anyone that's not familiar with a smart contract, keeping it simple, it's pretty much a contract that's made, and once it's ran, it can't be changed, meaning that no one has the power to overthrow it or stop it. Once it executes, it's self-executing. No one can stop it. So there is idea, in, I guess a concept or an idea in the crypto world that someone create, can create a will, a living will, through a smart contract. So once the contract starts, it's self-executing. No one can stop it. You, as I guess the creator of the smart contract, you set it up and it's going to self-run itself. The only problem is we're pretty far away from having smart contracts like that. When we first heard about Ethereum and smart contracts, everyone got very excited about the concept. But then they started to realize that there's so many little things that can go wrong on a smart contract. And we've seen that even on Ethereum. They had a big, hack, I guess you could say, hack on their smart contract. It was called the DAO. And that's what happens. And you actually can't consider it a hack because code doesn't think about ethics. Code is not moral. Code is simply following its commands. So if a contract is written poorly and it backfires, it's not like anyone stole the money. That's just the contract running on its own. So it's, start, it's something that you have to start thinking about holding cryptocurrency. It doesn't matter if you hold a million dollars worth or a thousand dollars worth or ten thousand dollars worth. There are some options that are coming to light. We have coin cover that I went over first for someone who's not tech savvy. And then I went over some ideas for the more tech savvy investor who has tech savvy friends or relatives. So just something for you to start thinking about. I hope that you liked today's video. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel so that every day when I make a new video, you'll get a notification. I want to thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.